My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I welcome you to this Eucharistic celebration. As we are in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us surrender ourselves and our intentions before the Lord. Let us begin the Holy Mass by signing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us pray together. I confess to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, and that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Set aside, O Lord, the bond of sentence written for us by the law of sin which in the Paschal mystery you cancelled, through the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. They elected seven men, full of the Holy Spirit. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You brothers must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch. A convert to Judaism, they presented them to the apostles 
who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased and a large group of priests made the submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Ring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp with a ten-string lute. Sing him songs. Response May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. For the word of the Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. The Lord loves justice and right and fills the earth with his love. Response May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Response May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Gospel Acclamation Alleluia, Alleluia! Christ, having been risen from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O God. In the evening, the disciples went down to the shore of the lake and got into a boat to make for Capernaum, on the other side of the lake. It was getting dark by now, and Jesus had still not rejoined them. The wind was strong, and the sea was getting rough. They had rowed three or four miles when they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming towards the boat. This frightened them, but he said, It is I. Do not be afraid. They were for taking him into the boat, but in no time it reached the shore at the place they were making for. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in Jesus Christ. The Jews had an understanding or they believed that the sea was the abode of evil. And Jesus walking over the sea, it represents or it shows us or it tells us that Jesus has the power over the evil one. And that is why when Jesus was walking on the sea and approaching the disciples who were afraid because they were caught up in storm. For, in, for the first moment, they were frightened as they thought it was a ghost. But then Jesus calls out to them and says, It is I, do not be afraid. These words of Jesus gave them peace and Jesus entered the boat and they reached their destination. My dear brothers and sisters, in our ways or in our works, in our daily life, many a times we are caught up in various ways. Sometimes we are caught up in tensions, worries, anxieties, and this in turn brings within us a fear. And because of this fear, many a times we are not able 
to seek the help of Jesus as the disciples. They were not able to seek, though they saw Jesus coming, but since it was dark, they were not able to approach because they thought that it was a ghost. In our daily life, we also, during our moments of crisis, our moments of stress, anxiety, we are not able to approach the others for help because of our fear. And Jesus is there always to render his help to us. And therefore, he says, we need to take the first step and the other remaining steps he will take towards us. We need to reach out to him. We need to extend our hand towards him and he will hold it for us and deliver us from the evil or from the anxieties or worries. The gospel passage, we see the disciples are able to experience peace and calmness when they recognize the words of Jesus or they, when they recognize the voice of Jesus. And Jesus enters their boat and they are able to reach their destination. This is the strength, this is the courage this was the peace that they received when they were with Jesus. And exactly this is what the apostles are doing today in the first reading. When they have a problem amidst them, when it is the Hellenists who come and tell that their widows are being neglected, and the apostles, when they come to know this problem, that there is no one there to serve them, they are very clear in telling them that we have dedicated our life for the service of the preaching of the word of God and we won't be able to serve at the tables. But they say we will pray. Bring seven men who are of devout nature and they pray and they distribute the duty of serving at the table to those seven devout men. My dear brothers and sisters, the problem when it came to the apostles, they were able to solve it with peace. And when they gave the solution, everyone accepted their solution because their solution came from God. And their solution gave them peace, harmony, joy. And that is why the problem was resolved. As the problem of fear was resolved in the gospel by Jesus, the problem of serving at the tables was resolved by the apostles with the help of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, St. Francis de Sales, he gives a beautiful example of a father and a child. He says that the, when the father takes the child to a garden, the child is holding in one hand the hand of his father and with the other hand he or she is busy plucking flowers, playing with that, not afraid because one hand she has held her father's hand. And because of that confidence, he is able to pluck flowers with the other hand. My dear brothers and sisters, what I would like to tell you with, through this example is, the disciples or the apostles said they will not be able to serve at the tables because they have dedicated their life for the service of preaching the gospel. My dear brothers and sisters, prayer and works need to go in hand in hand. Sometimes we give too much attention to prayer that we neglect what we are called to do. Or sometimes we give too much importance to our works that we fail to give a reverence to the one who has called us to do. And therefore we need to have a balance. We need to have an acknowledgement. And that is what through this example 
we have to realize that prayer is an important and essential thing in our lives. It is in and through prayer that Jesus blesses us with strength. It is in and through prayer that He comforts us, that He guides us, and He blesses us. And it is in and through prayer that we are called to go and serve the people who are entrusted to our care. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we go about doing our works, let us not compromise on our prayer. Let us not leave the grip of prayer from our hands or from our life. We need to do works very important. But more than important, we also need to pray. So my dear brothers and sisters, as we participate in this Holy Eucharist, let us ask the Lord to give us the grace and strength never to lose the sight of God in and through our prayer. And in and through prayer, when God, the guidance that we get, the strength that we get, the care and concern that we get, may we give that to our brothers and sisters who are entrusted to our care. May God bless us in our efforts. Lord, accept this bread and wine. Take a heart and make them die. Take a walk and our anxiety. Give us life and liberty. This prayer into your body and this wine into your blood. Change our lives, make us united, Lord, to spread the love of Christ the Lord. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Sanctify graciously these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of the spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Derek, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co hosts to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit let us offer each other the sign of peace peace be with you lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Loving you. 
let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's sing to our mother as we would sing to our love. Mother in heaven, yet mother with us on earth. Mary, we love you. Mary, we praise you. You are the joy of the earth. Angels revere you, saints gather near.